Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, David Owen, the former Foreign Secretary, a Brexit campaigner, joins me now. Lord Owen, very nice of you to come in. Uh, does the GO vision, that one where we are part of some large free trade zone but not of the single market, tally with your own vision for Brexit? Yes, I buy into it completely. I think there is a ch choice for this country now, and it's a very difficult one, and there are arguments on both sides. But the fundamental issue is where is the biggest risk? And you see, I think the biggest risk is of a collapse in the Eurozone. Now, people say, well, we're not in the Euro. Usually people who uh, wanted to go into the Euro. But it won't, it won't help us. I mean, look what happened to Greece. Greece could default. We could have problems in Italy. We could have problems in Spain. If you see six or seven countries running into a serious crisis, the Eurozone is in crisis. It's been there for six years. The Americans spent their whole time trying to get them to change. So for me, the question is, can you get out of the EU before you get a Eurozone sure. collapse? But that Go vision, very specifically today, and we learned optimistic. quite a lot. Not just optimistic, it is part of the free trade zone, but not of the single market. We just heard from the World Trade Organization chief negotiator, a man who's been doing years of this kind of thing, who said it's pie in the sky and it's a lie. Frankly, he doesn't believe it. Well, the issue is, what is this uh, referendum about? We in the campaign that are trying to persuade people to have the courage to leave are not going to be doing the negotiations. That is going to be the Conservative government for the next four years. We have transitional arrangements in the treaty which anticipates that somebody might be able to leave. But and we, you the can't Treasury, get it down to the Conservative government to make it work when we're trying to get people to well, understand... Who gave us the referendum? Who, who gave us the referendum? Well, you make Sometimes it sound like I, you want it to fail, then. No, I don't think want it to fail. I don't believe it will fail. What I'm saying is that there are many options which would face the government, and I think it was right for uh, Michael Gove to choose the one that nobody can stop us using, we can only build on, which is the WTO. Well, wait one. a second. When you say nobody can stop us using that, you just heard from Pascal Lamy, if you want free trade, you have to accept the rules. Now, in Gove's vision, that doesn't happen. No, it is it's quite untrue. He is saying that you have a basic treaty, which is WTO, and it has various tariffs, and some of them are not very helpful to us or to our EU partners, such as the rather high tax on cars, you would negotiate that. Now, we're helped by the position well, Who would that you more negotiate people... that with, though? Well, with, with Germany itself or with the whole well, of the G EU? Germany sells us rather a lot of cars, uh, and we're not going to be able to suddenly switch off. What would they want to? They're looking to expand their exports. They're not going to cut off. This, this depends on a very benevolent no, view no, of no. Germany towards the UK. Look, I've negotiated trade arrangements. I've negotiated in the old days of the Soviet Union fishing arrangements. You make deals with people who can be very hostile to you mm. because it's done on the basis of mutual interest. A trade deal is a deal. And the basic thing is, have you got something to sell? Have you got something to buy? And it's the balance of that. Now, the balance is in our favour. The, the now, balance the other thing is, comes down to who needs who most. And when you look at the figures, UK trade with Europe represents 12% of our GDP. But EU trade with us is just 3% of theirs. So collectively... We need the EU more than they individually need no, the No, you're UK. turning the statistics around the wrong way. There are two statistics which you've given us. But the powerful one is, which of the big countries selling a large amount to the UK who would be very seriously affected if there was, as you seem to think it possible, no trade? Not possible. But, I mean, they are Germany and they are France. And uh, there are other countries like the Netherlands too. So let's be clear. The other thing is that we're but, already but dropping... Just, just go back uh, to this, just this idea. Back, because no, let me just say one more fact. Over the last, uh, since 2002, we've shifted already away from the EU 10% of our trade. 
And that is going to go on. The EU is stagnating. Look, this has got a currency crisis. I just want to go back to this idea of trade, though, because in your vision, in Mr Gove's vision, this idea that France and Germany, who are probably pretty upset yeah. uh, with, a, with a Brexit, suddenly turn around and say, it's fine, UK, you can have what you want. We're no, not worried not politically about that. the next countries. They're not going to say that. You can have what you want. They're going to negotiate what can you give and what can we give. And they're not going to worry about what kind of message that sends out for any other country that's thinking they could leave too and break up the EU. We, you heard look, Michael look, Gove's comment. This we, is about democratisation of an entire continent. That's his end goal here. We are all living in a European space. We are all Europeans. We are members of many the same organizations. We have very complex deals. We're all members of NATO. One of the advantages of Britain going out is we will be able to pay more attention to that and we're going to need to in giving mm. American attitudes. No, I mean, the issue is, do you want to stay in the EU or not? If that decision is taken, it then comes to the government to have to take a look at all these different options. They're trying to put us in a box and say, if we say, well, we look at the EEA, they say to you, oh, well, that means you're accepting uh, freedom of movement of labor, you're accepting that you don't have any vote on the arrangements, and you're just accepting a Norway solution. Now, the fact of the matter is, under the circumstances in which we start to negotiate, they may be more open-minded on that. Then there's another question, but, but the Canadian... But would you say an end to freedom of movement, to border control, is central to your own vision of this? Because a lot of people would look at you and say, a Liberal, a Europhile, perhaps you come at this from a different perspective. I do. I, uh, there's no doubt about it. I spent the last four years trying to get the European Union to reform to reform the EEA, to make it possible for the EEA to be the basis of a second Europe. There's a perfectly logical thing. They refused. Look at Cameron's negotiation. He showed that he couldn't change it. Now we have a choice. If we decide to come out, as I believe we could, we then go into a period of, uh, well, probably we won't rush into it. We shouldn't rush into it. We'll start to take steps to bring back the communities uh, legislation which we passed in 1972. We'll consider our place and we'll then look at all the options. Look what's happening in America. Okay. What's going to happen to the North Atlantic Free Trade Area if you had President Trump, sure. for example? <laughs> <laughs> this world is much more on, uncertain than On that than fine think. note, um, we will leave it there. David Owen, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Happy